Um, so yeah, let's go back to biological Im immortality. Uh, this time on a personal level, as uh, someone who will live very, very long, you, you talk about two kinds of lifestyle, um, hedonistic and ascetic. So maybe you could explain uh, what those two lifestyles are. Yeah. Yeah. So th this is, and this is just one model. It's obviously not a, com not a comprehensive model, but it's, it's a, it's a dichotomy to think of. And so, uh, the hedonistic life or the hedonic life is basically living for pleasure, living for the things that feel good just because of the way your body works, right? You know, good food, sex and fun adventures, you know, going out and drinking with people, right? Cause if you have forever and you're, you're going to stay healthy, then why not just have as much fun as you can? Uh, so that's, that's one school of thought. And, uh, there's been plenty of, of, you know, fiction out there, science fiction and, and fantasy and stuff that kind of imagines this possibility. Uh, there's a couple possible downsides to that, though. One is just saturation. If you live and party every day, eventually it's going to get boring, right? Cause it's going to be the same thing that you experience day after day. And so variety is the spice of life. And so then it's like, Okay, well, after you party for a couple centuries, maybe you decide to, you know, grow up and do something more serious and more challenging. And this is the ascetic side of life. So the ascetic side is about discipline and challenge. And there's plenty of evidence that people thrive on challenge as well. Uh, this is why people play, uh, frustrating games like Elden Ring, right? It's because it's a difficult game to play. And then when you finally succeed, you feel good. And this is why people strive to get Nobel prizes and why people try and get, you know, a promotion is because, uh, overcoming a challenge is also deeply rewarding. And in, in many cases, you might say it's more rewarding because on the one hand, on the hedon, on the hedonistic side, you get an immediate biological reward. Right. You get dopamine and endorphins and and also and uh, oxytocin. So there's these these very short term biological rewards that you get for certain behaviors. Right. If you eat cheese, that's more rewarding than just eating like vegetables. Right. That's why we love pizza. That's why we love burgers is because that food is biochemically more rewarding. But on the ascetic side, you look for things that are more uh, philosophically rewarding, more uh, transcendentally rewarding. And that can be, uh, dedicating yourself to things like, um, spirituality or, uh, service to, to humanity or intellectual challenges. That's, that's kind of how I live, which is, can I solve these hard problems? And that's where I get some of my satisfaction. And in, in all cases, it's not going to be 100% one or the other, right? Everyone has a little bit of both in their life. It's just a matter of which one they favor. Um, but it's it's also helpful to be aware of in terms of like, you know, everyone knows someone who basically just wastes all their time playing video games and that's all they do and they never challenge themselves. And so they're more like lopsided to the hedonistic side of life. Um, and then you also know people who don't know how to have fun, right? You have people that all they do is work and they never play. And so they're more on the ascetic side. And so it's just a dichotomy to be aware of that life is about a balance. And if you spend too much time on one, maybe spend a little bit of time on the other uh, from time to time. And so that's why I brought that up, brought up that model, because if you're going to live forever, if you think about life in those two terms of like, OK, I'm going to live forever and I'm going to be young and healthy forever. So now what do I do? So you think about those two goals, you know, the you know enjoying life, but then also challenging yourself. And if you if you balance those, I think that people can be pretty happy uh, in the long run. It reminds me uh uh, the, the, what the Buddha said uh, about the middle way, because basically he was a prince at the beginning of his life and he had everything he wanted, all the pleasure of life, as much as he wanted. And then he went to be an ascetic and he suffered a lot and he almost died from starvation until he realized there was a middle way, which is what you said uh, just before. So I yep. it's interesting uh, going back to old philosophy like this. Yep. There's uh, something very similar in... Um in uh, a Greek philosophy as well, the golden, the golden mean, right? Uh, which is, you, and you, you pick a middle path between any extreme and a very similar idea. But yeah, I, I studied both uh, Western and Eastern philosophy mm -hmm. to come up with some of these ideas. Mm -hmm.